Operation Prosperity Guardian. That is the curious name being given to a new multinational security partnership established Tuesday. At least 10 countries have teamed up to protect international vessels in the Red Sea from ballistic missile attacks launched by the Houthis in Yemen. And the quirky name does not obscure that this is an escalation in the region. The Houthi attacks threaten more than 10 percent of global trade, pushing U.S. warships to answer distress calls from targeted vessels and pushing commercial giants to pause or reroute their shipments. Remy Innocencio has the latest from Tel Aviv. Some of the world's biggest shipping and oil companies are now rerouting their vessels away from the Red Sea after brazen attacks like this one by Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. A dozen ships attacked in just the past month. The Navy destroyer USS Kearney has been shooting down drones and missiles launched from Houthi-controlled territory in Yemen in support of Palestinians in the Gaza war. If one of these drones or missiles actually hits, we could not only see a disruption to shipping, but a, a complete closure of the Red Sea. 10 to 15 percent of global trade normally passes through, worth an estimated $1 trillion. Fearing Houthi attacks, ships are turning off transponders, hiring armed guards, and several companies are sailing around Africa. Not only is it going to be several weeks of delay, but they're also going to uh, have a higher cost. On the price of oil and on the entire supply chain, a pain consumers will feel. We've launched Operation Prosperity Guardian. In the region, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin announced a new task force to try to stop Houthi attacks, a 10-country military alliance with the intent to grow. So far, the only country from the Middle East to sign on is the tiny nation of Bahrain. In Gaza, Israel's bombardment continues, with nearly 20,000 people now killed, says Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry. Israel's military says it's dismantled Hamas's northern brigade and taken control of Jabalia. Strikes that hit the refugee camp there killed at least 50. More strikes in southern Rafah killed almost 30 others. I lost two grandchildren, said this woman, one just two weeks old. She didn't even get her birth certificate. And just hours ago, militants in Gaza released more videos of hostages, and this is the second time in two days. That comes as leaders from both Israel and Hamas are signaling that they are open to a humanitarian pause and a new hostage release deal. Also tonight at the United Nations Security Council, the vote on another ceasefire resolution has been postponed and for the second day in a row to tomorrow. Our U.N. correspondent Pam Falk in New York tells me that this is because calls for a cessation of hostilities are included, and that is a no-go on the part of the United States. John. Ramey Innocencio in Tel Aviv, thank you. So who exactly are the Houthi rebels behind these Red Sea attacks? Here are a few quick facts. The group was formed in the 1990s as a movement to promote the Houthi tribe with roots that date back centuries in Yemen. In 2014, they seized the capital, Sana'a, sparking a civil war with the Western and Saudi-backed government. The Houthis are backed by Iran and oppose U.S. and Israeli influence in the Middle East. For more on this, Mark Kansian joins me now. He is a senior advisor at the Center for Strategic and International Studies and a retired Marine Corps colonel. So, Mark, how did this, how did the Houthis evolve from being a religious group to now a force that's basically shuddering or, or making at least nervous 10% of global trade? Well, the answer is simple. One word, Iran. The Houthis are Shia, and they uh, are fighting against the Sunnis in Yemen. But Iran has been supporting Shia groups all around the Middle East and indeed around the world. Uh, they have armed the Houthis to the teeth, and as a result, the Houthis have now become not just a regional power, but a global power. Was the West surprised by this, and should they have been? I don't think the West was surprised. The Houthis have been using their military capabilities, these uh, missiles, for many years. Most of those have been aimed at Saudi Arabia, which has been backing the Houthis' opponents in Yemen, but they've also taken several shots at U.S. warheads, so it's not surprising that they were using their missiles now. And what's, what, do, what do they have to use, I mean, what are, um, to carry out these attacks? And, and does the U.S. and other of uh, these 10 other countries involved, do they have the firepower to, to manage it? Well, in the first part, the Iranians have given the Houthis a wide variety of both ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and also drones. Uh, many of these are, are 
quite sophisticated. Uh, they've allowed the Houthis to uh, launch attacks at great distances. On the other hand, the United States and its partners in the Red Sea do have the defensive systems that are designed specifically to take down these uh, kinds of attacks. They've been quite successful so far. One thing I've always been curious about is, is they are Iranian-backed, but does that mean that they are acting uh, always, and particularly in this instance, the way Iran wants them to? Is there any daylight between being Iranian-backed and, and, and whether Iran gives the thumbs up to this behavior? Well, from what we can see, not really. The Iranians are their major suppliers. Without uh, the Iranians, the Houthis would uh, not be able to hold their own in this civil war. Uh, so they have uh, followed their uh, the direction from Tehran. And the Houthis really otherwise don't have a, a dog in this fight. They, they uh, don't border Israel. They have not been uh, particularly involved in uh, conflicts with Israel. The only reason that they're shooting at tankers and at Israel is because Iran wants to regionalize this conflict. In other words, they want it to be not just an Israel versus Hamas conflict uh, in a corner of uh, uh, the Middle East there. They want to make it a general conflict across the region, uh, including Yemen. And now Secretary of Defense Austin has announced this international coalition to help protect the commercial ships in the Red Sea. What's your sense? How do you expect that to play out? Well, the good news is that the United States has put together this coalition. There are a lot of ships involved. Uh, these ships have the capability to take down uh, the Houthi uh, missiles and to protect not just the shipping, but uh, Israel also. The risk is that one of these missiles gets through, that it causes casualties, maybe causes U.S. casualties. That would cause us to reevaluate uh, our, uh, our effort. Mark, do you, as a last question, anticipate anything close to a strike actually in Yemen uh, as a part of these operations? Unfortunately, I, I think that that's highly likely. As I said, one of these missiles may get through. The United States may feel it has to retaliate. Uh, and then we would see these kinds of strikes by U.S. Uh, missiles against training camps and various facilities uh, in Yemen. Those are mostly going to be symbolic because the Houthis are um, – quite hardened by war. We won't be able to, to take them out, but that might uh, back them off so that they don't uh, pose as much of a threat to shipping in the Red Sea. Mark Kansian with the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me on the show.